Yo, 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 in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how we plan to scale our development business from a 15 million pound a year business to 150 million pound a year business. Stick around to the end to find out. So I'll start on this video by explaining what it is exactly that we do. So we are a development group, a development business, and we have different verticals within the business that all fold into each other nicely from sourcing and acquisitions to design to construction to lettings on the back end. We've captured every part of the project lifecycle and we've built those systems around HMOs. We knew that when we started in development about five, six years ago, that we could productize this service for investors where investors own their own assets and we manage it as a service rather than necessarily owning our own properties as well. Of course, we do our own developments, but we'll put that to one side for this video. This is purely our development service. And yes, our own projects also fall into this service. What we've done over the last year is build and productize the service for HMOs. We chose HMOs because they're diversified, they require less capital, they are less reliant on red tape and planning permission. So we chose HMOs as a product and we had a target last year to get to 24 HMOs in one year and then to 48 this year. We are now on track to do 48 HMOs. So as a business right now, we focus on doing HMOs, 48 of them in a year. 48 HMOs, reason being, there's one a week for every month, which I know there's 52 months in a year, but there's 12 months, 12 times it's four, 48. So that's our target. Our internal target is 48 HMOs. And the reason we've done this is because we can create the systems and processes and the fundamentals to a larger development business by using an easier product to service and also a more attractive product for investors. If we were to go and do a load of new build flips and things like that, we'd be caught up in so many time delays and capital constraints and market dynamics and all kinds of other things. Whereas HMOs are pretty weatherproof as far as market dynamics are concerned. And they're also just a great use case to build income, build wealth for prospective investors. So we've started with 48 HMOs. So take a HMO, there she is. It comes in the front end, we find the asset, we secure the asset on behalf of our clients, and then we manage the refurbishment. Let's do a nice big hammer there. We do refurbishment, let's just, that's a refurbishment. And then it comes out the other end and it goes to our lettings business and our lettings business then manages it in perpetuity and we're building up these different trading vehicles around the one core product which is HMOs. That's what we're building it around so that we can then scale it into larger projects and we've now just started commercial to residential projects for our clients. We do actually have seven of our own commercial to residential projects of which some are complete, some are going through planning and some are going through conveyancing still. So we are also doing those. We have only just recently started offering those as a development service to investors. So then we want to take the same systems and processes we've created here with the sourcing and acquisitions division, with the construction division, and with the lettings and management division. But also within those divisions, there's things like, you know, the administrative tasks and the design process needs to happen pre-construction before it goes into the site. But all of those same principles apply the same on the commercial to resis, on the larger schemes. It's just they're inherently more difficult and a bit slower, but they're a diversified option and they're where we want to go as a business. Doesn't mean we're going to sack off the HMOs, it just means we're going to add commercial to residential developments. That's uh, that's an office building. Let's just say that's, a, that's an office building. We want to do loads of these instead. And our plan is to try and do five in the next year, just for clients. And we'll do five of those, and then we'll scale those up as well, where we can then do one a month back end of next year going into 2026. And again, adopting the exact same processes. We still have to source these sites. We still have to do all the design, the paperwork. We still have to do the construction. And then we still pass it on to our lettings team on the back end and refinance and things like that. Everything's a sequential process in property development. And we've started on a nimble asset class, on a nimble product, something that we can build quickly and then build the systems and the teams around them and then scale that into the commercial to resis. And then we'll go bigger. And then these will be typically five to 10 unit schemes. So five to 10 apartments. The first one we've secured for a client is an eight apartment scheme. It's a large rear extension and uh, the loft doing and there'll be a mix of one beds, two beds and studios. Those are the kind of schemes we're going to target initially. And then we'll move on to larger developments, a larger commercial commercial to resis. The reason being is because that 15 million that takes 48 HMOs can be achieved by say five or 10 commercial to residential projects on a smaller scale. And then those smaller to residential projects, we can then do the same amount in development value with say just two larger commercial to residential projects. And that gives us those economies of scale where we're doing just one transaction, we're getting the same amount of value as if we were doing say 20 transactions up here. And those are the slower bits. Those are the nuances. It's, it's multiple investors, it's multiple touch points because of the 
the different transactions and the conveyancing and the planning and the construction and different sites and addresses to look after. That's much more scalable when you go into larger sites. And that's why most developers trend towards doing larger and larger projects. But what they don't do is look after their bottom line and diversification of cash flow. And that's where most developers run into issues. Whereas we want to keep doing the smaller projects as well. We want to stack on top the different products as we go. And as and when we get to the point where we're doing these larger and larger developments, then we'll start dropping off the HMOs and focusing more on the smaller commercial to resis and keep them as our bottom line, keep them as our liquid cash flow instead of just relying on the large projects. And then once, we're, once we've once we moved beyond this, so just to reiterate, we're going to have this first section here, HMOs, which is where we already are. We're doing 48 of those a year. Then we're going to get into doing these smaller commercial to residential projects, which we've already started for clients. And we'll do five to 10 of those a year. And then once we're consistent with doing that process, we're then going to go into just larger development projects, which we may do for ourselves in the meantime anyway, but for clients, we want to make sure the service is perfected and it is a seamless process like we've done now with the HMOs. So once we're then at this stage, then we'll probably do two to three of those kind of sites a year. Then we'll start to think about potentially dropping off the volume of HMOs we're doing so that we can then focus more on the larger projects. And then once we're out of these larger projects, we're then going to move on to what our end goal is. You know, why have we built this development business? Why do we want to become one of the biggest and well-known developers in the UK? Well, you've got to have dreams, right? If you're going to do it, go big or go home is what I'd say. So what we want to do eventually is build to rents. We want to build tower blocks and tower blocks of apartments. Again, diversified units, higher yields and retaining the assets and build a brand out of it where we've got our nice little butterfly there. That is not a butterfly, but let's just say it's our butterfly. We want that to represent our brand for a new kind of living. Co-living schemes is what we want to be able to do and do them potentially internationally, but retain these assets. And this is a build to rent strategy. But rather than jump in and try and just do one of these big projects from the outset when we don't have a nice cash flow cushion to cover our bottom line, we'd rather build up those trading products beforehand, the HMOs, the smaller commercial to resis, and then the larger commercial to resis. And then once we've got those nice and liquid and they're working well and they fed our construction business, our development business, our lettings business, and they then become larger and larger entities in their own right because of the sales process and we're extending that lifetime value of our clients where we're capturing them at every point of the project life cycle and keeping the control and making sure that we can deliver on expectations, then we can move into the bigger jobs. And this is the exciting stuff one day. And this is probably five, 10 years away from where we are now. But we're happy to wait, happy to be patient. I'm looking forward to perfecting these processes here. I'm, I'm excited that we're now getting into the commercial to residential conversions for our clients. And it means that ultimately we will need bigger investors as well, because you need a bigger war chest to get into these kind of things here. But we don't discriminate against investors. We will keep doing the smaller stuff as well, because why not? We've already learned how to do it. So we can just add on top. But eventually we'll need a lot of middle management to manage what will become a very large business if we keep doing those kind of scales, we will tether off the volumes that we're doing in HMOs and commercial to resis as we move further and further towards our end goal, which is the build to rents where we do them. We might do say one up here in the Northeast. We might do one in the South. We might do one in Southern Europe. You know, I want to be able to take it internationally, kind of like the Hiltons have, or you think of large franchises or large brands that operate in the development space or hoteliers. That's exactly what we want to do. And our little butterfly logo is going to lead us all the way. But obviously, as we do this, we're going to be ramping up our, our development pipe line where we're starting from 15 million pounds a year and we're going to then getting into more like 30 million and then getting into 50 to 100 million and then we'll get into this place where we might be doing three four of these sites a year and these could be collectively anywhere from 100 200 300 million i don't really know and inflation the way inflation is going a fucking loaf of bread would probably cost as much as one of those things one day. But anyway, that's our plan. That's how we're designing our business. We're creating the foundation blocks to a scalable development business that is a self-fulfilling life cycle where we're extending lifetime value of our clients. We're creating a unique service, a unique offering, which I don't see anyone else in the UK doing at the moment, not capturing that full end-to-end -end solution. We're aggressive in our scale, aggressive in our approach. And ultimately, we need that scale to be able to afford more middle management within our margins so that we can reach the size that we want to get to. So it's a battle. It's not easy. It's going to be difficult, but that roughly is our plan. I hope it's been an interesting view for you guys watching. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? What do you think of our plan? What do you think of the struggles and the issues that we might have along the way? Do you have any ideas, any advice, uh, or do you have any questions or the things you want to see in other videos that you want me to do? I'm happy to dive in and educate as much as possible and humiliate, you know? Maybe this is a bad idea. If you think it is, let me know in the comments. Big love. I'll see you in the next one.